Hello, this is Solar PV TV from EU PVSEC 2016 from Munich. And now we have a pleasure to speak to Nigel Taylor, who is working for GRC. He's a project leader at the European Commission GRC. Uh, but um, most importantly, uh, he's a chairman of the scientific committee of EU PVSEC. And I suppose he's a quite, let's say, um, tired person after this busy week. Yes, Nigel? Well, tired, but very happy, actually. I think we've had a, a great conference this week. Uh, we've again confirmed that EU PVSEC is the world's largest event for, for uh, PV research and innovation. Uh, my head is just kind of buzzing now, actually, with, uh, with all the stuff I've, I've heard over the week. And, uh, You're too much excited now. Eh? <laughs> yeah, I need to uh, unwind a bit. But um, no, I, I think it's, it's been a, a good week. We've had uh, a lot of good feedback. Uh, we've had a, you know, the, the program aims to cover a really broad range. I mean, we're, we're starting from the kind of basic material science concepts, uh, some of the mainstream technologies, but then also some of the innovative technologies, uh, and then right through to the application areas uh, and policy issues. So um, uh, it's, it's been really interesting. I mean, one thing, if I was, if I was looking at the, the program now, uh, let's say in the current market, we're used to seeing ever, uh, that silicon PV is the dominant technology. If you look at the conference, Silicon PV is a very important part, but there's a lot of other areas that are doing exciting things and offering great potential for the future. In the area, still in the area of tin films, but also of the uh, organic or inorganic cells, but also in the application areas, in building uh, adapted or solutions for building energy, that type of thing. So which will be the, let's say, the, the next uh, technologies which will drive the solar industry? Yeah, I, I don't think it's, uh, it's, it's that kind of picking winners type of uh, approach. I think what's really interesting about photovoltaics as a technology is that it has huge scope for improvement. Uh, we have a, a really excellent technology that's the, the market leader at the moment, so silicon, which itself is developing rapidly. But we have a lot of alternatives as well looking to the future. We have the thin film concepts, which are uh, this week we heard that they now have efficiency levels that are really... Uh, right there with uh, the polycrystalline PV, that's the current industry workhorse. And in the past we couldn't even imagine, yeah? Well, it, it, in the past it was being thought of as, the, let's say, uh, the, the low efficiency little brother to, to uh, silicon PV, but this week we've seen that it, it's, it's now, uh, it can compete on level terms really in terms of uh, efficiency. Um, we've also seen uh, a lot of work in other areas, in the organic area, which is an exciting area for, for the future, uh, and the, uh, so a number of different concepts, the so-called perovskite cells, again, uh, it's been a, an exciting area, but with a lot of questions, open questions with regard to the stability of the devices, even things like toxicity, and so all of those areas have, been, have had a lot of attention this week, and I, I think we've... Uh, we can see uh, progress and we can see some solutions to some of the challenges that are there. And uh, you are focusing in your, let's say, work at GRC, uh, not only on solar, but also on other renewables. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, from your experience, um, because you observe, you know, this development of, of renewables since quite a lot of years, uh, how this attitude uh, of the European community, of the countries, is changing towards uh, particularly solar? I think there is an, uh, an increasing acceptance of, of solar. I mean, uh, it's one of our most successful renewable energy technologies. Uh, uh, maybe wind is the most uh, commonly known, but PV is right up there now. Um, I think what, the, in terms of deploying in Europe, the, the, it's also an economic issue. It's not really a technolo technology issue. Mm -hmm. Uh, and as I think everybody knows, we went through uh, boom years in a number of countries uh, that were with, very, with uh, support programs which really kick-started the development that we're seeing today, but it also uh, incurred some costs that, will, that, uh, that we're still trying to develop from. Uh, and so, but now I think uh, there's now a realization that PV can compete a bit by itself, that it has... Uh, that it doesn't need to be heavily subsidized to make a real contribution to the, the to the to climate change mitigation to reducing our greenhouse gas emissions do you believe that um with PV like a leading renewable technology but also with others we can reach 100% of renewables 
from the technical point of view and maybe also from the political, yes, because you are uh, working very closely with uh, politicians. Well, the, the, uh, I mean, the, the European Union has a long-term goal to decarbonize uh, by uh, 2050. And technically it is certainly feasible, but uh, in the way we organize our energy system, we balance a number of different uh, factors. There's economic factors, sustainability factors, uh, and so you have to look at that whole mix together, and that's actually where the, the policy makers come in. They have to make some of these difficult decisions about how what's the best way to, to go ahead. From the technical side, we can offer a range of solutions. Uh, I think that's, that's our job, and, uh, and we can also think about solutions for how the, the market should develop, what energy mixes could be available in the future. Uh, but ultimately, it's the, the mix itself is something that the society has to decide on. It's a social change, actually. Yeah? It, is, it is, actually, it is, yeah, because it has uh, to go 100% renewable uh, has huge implications. It's not just electricity, it's all about the way we heat our houses and buildings, our transportation system, uh, and uh, these, are, these are big issues. How, how do we actually change? It, it does involve a strong element of societal change. So we are speaking about the future, about changing uh, the future, and what role of EU PVSEC you would uh, see in this process? Well, I think EU PVSEC is important for, for two main reasons. Firstly, it's, an import, it's a, a real showcase of research. It gives the research community a chance to get together to generate new ideas, synergies. Uh, and for the policy side, I think it's very important because it it illustrates the opportunities and the, the options that, that are available now and will become available in, in 10 years' time. So I think it, it's, uh, it's very valuable from that perspective. So I think that there is a quite a bright future uh, in the front of EU PVSEC and the whole solar sector. What do you think about that? Absolutely. We're, uh, I think um, EU PVSEC can continue to be a great success in the future and it's important for uh, our whole energy system development. Did you put already uh, EU PVSEC in your next year's agenda? I did indeed, yes. Uh, thanks so much for the support of EU PVSEC and your hard work. You. It was Thank great you. job. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. That was Solar PVTV together with the chairman of the scientific committee of EU PVSEC 2016 with uh, Nigel Taylor. Thanks for watching.